Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Salem at Work, the show about uh, local workforce development efforts. Uh, as you know, we've talked a few times about the Career Achievement Network, which is a regional effort to build a work-ready community in our region. Well, today we're talking about one of those changed lives. Mm -hmm. Today is my guest. I've got Paige Rancourt. Thank you for joining us, Paige. And her site supervisor for the work experience portion of her uh, job here at CCTV, mm -hmm. Arlen, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me on the show, JD. We've seen this show. But Paige, have we ever been on this show? <laughs> right? We're on, we're on Insight right now. Oh my God. You're, you're really, you're really honed in Man. on the reality of Salem. The weight of it's <laughs> kicking in, JD. Take it away. Like we're just dealing with it now. Paige, you, you went through a, a pretty good amount of change. You mentioned change, or did you? I don't know what you just said. Uh, but, but Paige, you, you got to participate in the Career Achievement Network. You went through the classes. The first question I have for you is just, how did you hear about it? Um, I heard about it through my boyfriend. He was in the pilot program of this, or of the thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Wes came in and, and he did his work experience out at uh, Marion Polk Food Share. And so he, he had a, a, a slight role in bringing you in. What, how did he bring the, the program to you? Um, well, I went to a couple of things with him while he was in it. And then he told me to join because I couldn't get a job. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like, oh, you're not getting a job. The program helped me get a job. You should do it. So I finally did it. <laughs> so you jumped in, jumped in with both feet. And so that was the factor that made you really choose to go ahead and, and do it was that lack of, of finding, getting, and keeping a job. Yeah. 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 Great. So Arlen, talk about hosting Paige. What was that like? Well, uh, Paige was the first intern we brought in, and that was, uh, it's something we've always wanted to do at CCTV. We always, we already teach classes, and we, we help community members get involved and have their own voices heard. Uh, that's kind of a fundamental thing we do with the organization. But to be able to, to work with young adults and have some kind of an internship program where they can get exposed to everything we do and, and work more like an employee versus a person who just takes classes and, and does a show, um, it's something we've always wanted to do. We just didn't know how, for us, the stress was how do we put that program together? Like, mm -hmm. who do we reach out to? Where do we find people? Where will we find the people that would even want to do it? And the timing on it was really strong because we actually had two interns from two separate programs start at the same time. One was Paige Rancourt, the other one was Meadow Wheaton. And we were really excited because we basically said, well, let's just expose the interns to what we have. We've got studio and truck production and editing opportunities and all the classes, camera, studio, final cut, the whole nine yards. And uh, then we kind of just wanted to see where the interns were the most impressed or wanted to, to do the most. And it ended up being that both, they did everything. So uh, uh, I think Meadow maybe focused a little more on editing and then Paige for sure was more of studio. We did a lot of studio shows together. Like, and and it's, there's a very dynamic way of working with public. You're really good with working with people. Not everybody has that <laughs> skill. So, because um, everybody kind of has a different background and a different expectation when they do a show. Sure. But, uh, you know, back to the question on, on, you know, how did we get that started? It was you guys. Like, we were, the structure of the program and us having like a, 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 a weekly or a, a quarterly forum to fill out and a performance appraisal, how all that worked was very simple for us. All we had to do was supply um, opportunities for the intern, and they did the rest. So yeah, that's a, that, that was good for you guys. The program helped. So oh, well, I'm glad it, it panned out for everybody. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, but one one great way it panned out was Paige's growth in particular. Mm -hmm. Speak to that. How how did you observe her growing throughout the 200 hours that she was here as an intern? Well, uh, like like most young folks, she was pretty quiet at first because you're just kind of trying to take it in. And uh, especially studio side, uh, there's a lot of different people with different backgrounds who come in through the door and wide, age, uh, wide uh, range of age. So we go from senior citizens down to children doing shows. So um, Paige did a good job. She kind of stayed back and watched and took it in. Um, very fast learner, picked up on everything really quick. The technology side was very easy. 
Um, and then once you, you kind of you learn someone's setup and how they do a show, and then what you have to do to help them get through it, that's the big bridge because um, people that make shows here are community members. They're not television professionals, so they don't do this every day. They have a nine-to-five job. They're retired. They do a bunch of other things and then come in once a week, once a month, and try and do a television show. It takes a little bit of work to do that, so you have to be pretty well-rounded. And uh, yeah, Paige really came into her own. She did really good at reading people and understanding what their expectations were and managed them. That's really hard because sometimes someone will want to do something that's very difficult. You just got to go, can we do it this way? It would be really nice to, to have that in there, but um, maybe if we do it this way, it, it'll be a little more efficient mm -hmm. and we can get the show done. And at the end of the day, uh, did the show get done? Did it make it to the Dropbox? Did it play on the channel? That's the ultimate game we play every day and, mm -hmm. and Paige was awesome. She, she did very well. There wasn't a single producer that came in that she couldn't help them do their show. So Excellent. That's a big range of skill because I, yeah. I, I do that job and it will, it will try you. <laughs> it's trying. It will times. make you into a it's totally different person. It's rewarding and trying at moments. Sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Paige, what would you say your growth looked like throughout the, the course of being here and engaging in the Rethinking Careers workshop? Um, a lot of it uh, boosted my self-esteem. It also got me to do things I wasn't allowed to do in high school. That dealt with the self-esteem problems that happened. My senior year, I was bullied, and my counselors told me I was too stupid to do things I've wanted to do since I was eight in high school. Um, I couldn't do TV production because I was too stupid and it wouldn't fit in my schedules. Um, I was bullied, and I came here, all the staff, mostly Arlen and producer Michael Severin, boosted my self-esteem back to where it was my junior year of high school, which was like beyond high and believing I could do anything. Mm -hmm. um, that didn't make me feel bad that I wasn't in college yet, I wasn't doing this yet, that I was just trying to find my way. And they helped me find my way. And so did the program. That's really amazing that, that the influence of a few people can, can take you from, from going from, from a great high spot and, and then plummeting down into Badville, uh, <laughs> and then bringing you back up by by a small, really a small investment. Um, Two hundred hours is not that long, and yet you're saying that throughout that that course of time, you went from basically a year of bullying, and and wiped it out, and and moving yourself back to where you had been in a really good spot. Yeah, that's really encouraging. It's wild. I would have never known you had dealt with that. You seem really well rounded <laughs> and dealt with stuff really good. So. Um, yeah, sorry you had to deal with that because I. It only takes a couple, one or two people can can make a, a huge negative influence on a person the same way one or two people can help someone out. Yeah. So glad you overcame that. Yeah. Thanks to you. <laughs> so thank you. Oh, good show too. Well, no. well look at that. We just <laughs> yeah. we caught that. That was on camera. It was, you guys those, all, it was the magic. It was <laughs> magic on CCTV. <laughs> this is a beautiful thing. You see that. Um, so, so since the program, since you've walked through that, um, where is life at now? What's different? Um, well, I have a job. I work at uh, Cindy's Hallmark in the downtown mall. And I still produce, or not produce, I direct uh, Michael Severin's TV show mm -hmm. every Thursday night. I'll come in occasionally and direct some of the old people's shows that I haven't directed in a while. Mm -hmm. So I come in so I can still be here still be around people that keep me positive when life gets me down and you know I work at Hallmark and it's fun no rude customers there it's like best retail job ever <laughs> <laughs> so you got that when did you finish here your, um, your work experience here I finished about mid-october okay yeah and then you got your job at Hallmark in mid-november mm -hmm. so it took you a quick little month yeah, and actually took something in. two weeks off for health problems of not searching for a job. So sure. it took me like two weeks to get a job versus I was a year and a half, over 320 wow. applications mm -hmm. and only three job interviews in that time period. And then you took, you took so you took what you, you learned here and immediate application, immediate gratification. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For me, the ultimate expression would be to see Paige work in television and film industry, though, because Art and Soul is a great series. That's the series she works yeah. on, and I think that show has the potential to go places, but 
Um, she has a real talent and skill in television, so uh, I still, I still, I wish that <laughs> for you. We even talked about making doc documentaries and a bunch of things, because a, a lot of times in television you have to kind of, you can still make your own thing, so I'll, I'll still bug you about that <laughs> at least once a month and go, you know, I mean, the opportunities are there. Sometimes you just have to make your own, you just make your own thing, and that's what gets you a job somewhere else, because look, oh, we really want her, because you know, she has these skills of, of doing, you know, put, telling a story in a way that's interesting to people. But I think that series you work on now, Art and Soul, is one of those. Though. I'm proud to see that crew come together. That's a really well done show. So it's awesome you hung around and stayed with that for me. I was like, <laughs> <"Thank you." laughs> I was afraid we so, wouldn't see you again. So, so. You're, you're here volunteering then. Yes. Is, is there, she stuck around. You guys yeah. made a big impact. <laughs> well, and she did with us, too. So, I mean, she's on a really good show with a producer. Uh, Mike's a really good guy, really good talent. He has a real positive message he does in his show. And uh, it was a good match. As, as she helped out in studio shows, Mike was new, actually. He was one of our new guys as we developed his series page was right there. And um, she was there on the ground floor. And mm -hmm. um, that's really, that, that meant a lot to me. I was afraid we wouldn't see her again, so... She was someone I didn't want to see disappear. Whatever yeah. we had to do, I wanted her. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if mm -hmm. more people from her generation are invested in television, CCTV will be around in 20 years because of it. So we try and look at that long term also and go, mm -hmm. okay, I'm not going to be here forever. The next mm -hmm. generation is going to have to take over at one point in time. So we take that pretty serious when we work with the young people and young adults because they're the next wave of people in another 15, 20 years. That'll be hopefully continuing what we've done. So. You yeah. know, I am greedy. I look at it from that perspective, too, <laughs> and go, oh, you know, we're, we need you. We need you here. So. There's, there's as, as we were talking about earlier, um, there's, there's a big effort to train up the younger generation mm -hmm. uh, currently moving nationally, but here locally as well. Mm -hmm. What advice would you offer to businesses that are kind of going, I don't know if I really want to or can get involved in that sort of an effort? Yeah. What kind of advice would you give them? Well, no matter what business it is, no matter what service they offer, I don't care if it's food or anything, service in industry, productions, nonprofits, that's a huge one. Nonprofits, like across the board, if you look at their clientele and the people who volunteer, the age is always older people. They're going after like retired people and all that. And it's like, if you want your nonprofit to survive in 30 years from now, you need millennials as a part of your organization. You need to train them, expose them to it, and then when opportunities come up, they're there. They know what it is. So, um, yeah, for any business, there's reasons to not be looking at this generation and saying, how do we make more opportunities? On a business side, it just means your business is going to grow. If you're doing your business correct and we get out of this, you know, we've been at a, a pretty good stand still, but things are growing very slowly and steadily. Um, the opportunities need to be there. So. This is a patient generation, but they've been waiting for a few years. Mm -hmm. A lot of people waiting for their chance to do something. So mm -hmm. I, I embrace that. Uh, something Paige and I also talk about too on the side is that her generation is they're making things and innovating faster than we did. And a lot of that's because of this current economy. It's because they don't see the opportunities as much. So a lot of them are making their own things. So that's where internet and you know web design and all that is really kind of graphic design. and. Um, storytelling, which is what we get into with videos, is sure. a lot of her generation saying, fine, I'll forge my own way. But for a local business, I mean, these are the people that will run it one day. So if you can get them early Momentum. and they're into what you do, that's, a, that's like a lifetime employee. That's what you want. Sure. That's your ideal employee is someone who says, I don't want to ever go anywhere. I want to stay here. And that's one of the great things about this generation, Generation uh, Y, or the millennials, is mm -hmm. that they really care about their community. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you can you could speak pretty well, I'm sure, Paige, to uh, the the things that you guys care about being investing into other people, and that's that's kind of been lost in previous generations. You know, the old guys here sitting around you, um, that that they care less than you guys do. There's a big emphasis there. Mm -hmm. Why is it that you guys care so much about your community? Um, I don't know. Personally, I care about my community and other people more because I know what it's like to be neglected by people mm -hmm. that you want to care about you. Um, people that, you know, you don't really care whether or not they care about you, but they still, you know, they put bad thoughts into your head of who you are and you want to help people realize, you know, I may be suffering, but you know what, I don't want you to suffer either. 
So you try to build them up and maybe have a strong community and have everybody be good at one point. Right on. Thank you for participating in the net. You've you've done uh, far more than, than you realize and what was given to you, you've given back tenfold. So uh, thanks for joining us on this episode. As you can see, there's a lot of work to do in developing the future of our workforce in our community and beyond. The question, as always, is what will you do with your gifts and talents to make Salem and beyond better? Till next time, have fun.